Welcome back to another episode of Chasing Tone Podcast. I'm Brian with Max and Anthony from Texas Blues Alley. And today we talk about how to set up your amplifier when you're playing on stage so you don't kill the front of the, of the audience, the people in front of you. And we also demonstrate and talk quite a bit about how to set a clean tone up with, uh, with pedals. So with that, let's get right into the show. The question we receive is, what is the best way to set your stage amp to fill the venue without killing the front row? Well, we had discussed a couple different options. Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, tilting the amp. That's one way. Back. Mm -hmm. um, the downside of that is that sometimes um, that can make it hard to concentrate when you're playing because now the amp is pointed right at your head, essentially. And it is really hard to get a tone that you like when you're looking right at the speaker. Um, so maybe an angle somewhere between what would be hitting people in the crowd and mm -hmm. what would be hitting your ears, somewhere in between there might be a happy medium. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but I've actually used the clear sonic shields yeah, that go yeah, around it. Mm -hmm. um, those, you can get them uh, clear. I think Joe Bonamassa has a signature one that is just, it's just clear. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that can really cut down your volume. Those are actually useful for uh, recording as well because you can get them with acoustical panels on the inside so that it deadens it a little bit so mm -hmm. you don't get a lot of boominess inside the cage while you're recording. Um, but the problem with those is that they're almost too good in the sense that, um, let's say you have what feels like an appropriate level of stage volume with your amp without anything around it. You put one of those uh, barriers in front of it, now, I mean, he mentioned just turning down the treble. Sounds like it sucks the life out of your tone. You put a, a plexiglass shield around it, it's going to sound very, very muffled. Yeah. Um, so then, really, you have to be miking it with a PA and feeding right. it back through the monitors. And then you're kind of at the or mercy of the sound man or your in-ears yeah. to get a good level. And so um, if you spend the time to, if you're going to do that, you got to spend the time to get the mix just right because when you're in the middle of playing, you don't want to be thinking about, you know, oh, my amp sounds tinny or it sounds muffled or something like that. So there are ways around it, but those are just two that, that we had talked about before. I don't know if you guys have any other... Have you ever used the beam mm -hmm. blocker or something like that? I don't like know that? if I've used the beam block, the, the, the Weber thing. Right? Yeah, I think I, Visual Sound sells something like that. Is that like, like, the, like a hubcap. Yeah, yeah, is that like the Visual Sound thing? Yeah. It's supposed to disperse the They'll sound? They'll sell that, well, a True Tone now is what their name is. Um, right, right. But um, it, I, never, I never tried that before, but... Uh, I played with a few. Yeah, I mean, it, it does it does disperse the sound a little bit, but I still didn't really quite care for it. Like, yeah. just, it, I don't know, it just had the uh, a you weirdness felt like to it. like you lost some of your sparkle? Kind, or Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't well, know how to explain it. It, it that, just didn't sound natural to me. That's that straight sense. on. I mean, what's going on here is basically when the amps pointed at the crowd, the reason he turns his treble up is because, you know, the, the speaker's pointing down here past your knees. Right. It's, it's hitting the back of your legs. It's hitting the back of your legs. And your ears are all the way up here. And, uh, you know, bass frequencies are very unidirectional. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you could be standing behind the amp and you'd still hear the bass. But the right. high frequencies are very directional. And right. when they're coming out, especially the real center of the speaker there... I mean, they come out like a lightning bolt, and whoever happens to be sitting in the crowd right in front of the amp, they're just getting... <laughs> Honestly, it wouldn't matter what you set your amp at. If somebody's sitting right in front of the amp, it's going to be hard for them to really have a good time. Uh, but you can get a really nice kind of ambient sound when you're standing over your amp, and you get the tone just set mm -hmm. just right. So, you know, this person is setting it so it sounds right to them standing in front of the amp, but it's, it's hitting the person right, right in the face in the front row there. And um, it's because of the directional nature of the higher frequencies right. coming off the speaker. It's going right, right. Uh, right to them. And Max, you were talking about that you like to sometimes set your amp like turned a different yeah, direction. Yeah, I've actually flipped my amp all the way around. Where speakers, mm -hmm. you know, the back of the speakers are facing the crowd, and like especially smaller clubs. Or I play one club where it has like glass and brick, so everything's like real bouncy anyway. So I just flip it all the way around, and it works. Does it so. bounce off the window? Not too much. You, right. it's, a, it's an old single-pane window. It just kind of filters through, so it's not right. too bad, yeah. 
Are they, uh, when you flip the amp around like that, is that when you're playing through a PA system, or do you yeah. play with just the amp by itself? Just amp by itself, if I can, yeah. Like, yeah. I played it that way at a club that was mic'd up. It didn't, some of those clubs really didn't need to be mic'd up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for the most part, if I'm playing a really small club and I just have like my super, uh, it's just it's just moving a lot of air, so I'll flip it around, and uh, just so I don't kill everybody in uh, the first two rows. Yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. And I, I know I've definitely played with people before who will, uh, <laughs> they'll they'll compensate for you know like they'll turn the treble up and everything so whenever they're in front of the ramp it sounds good but when you're like when you walk out and listen to the mange like oh my gosh yeah. that is all trouble yeah. you know and it sounds it just sounds like it's cool. rough yeah uh one thing i found out the hard way is uh <clears throat> tilting your amp to the side can be a good solution unless the side that you tilt it to is facing the bass player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you're mad at the bass player, it could yeah, be a right. good solution. What is I, I had a uh, vibroverb one time I played a show with, and uh, that's only 40. I mean, what's the super? The super is 60. So, yeah, for, I think once the one I have is 60. I think they make it like 40 in yeah. general. But. So this was a 40-watt uh, vibroverb. And it was a huge outdoor stage, so I figured I'd be able to crank this thing. Well, basically, I got it to three, and it was already too loud for me <laughs> even to stand in front of. Right. So I tilted it in, and uh, boy, the, it was it was I was not popular <laughs> with the guys in the band because I mean that thing, the the speaker that this was the uh, '64 reissue they did with the, yeah. the Caesar Diaz Mazuer. The speaker they put in that thing was really really mid rangey, like really like. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, don't tilt it towards the guys in your band unless you, uh, <laughs> unless you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so did we? Did you have any kind of demos that you yeah. want to do for this to kind of yeah, demonstrate? So, so yeah. So like right now, probably a uh, good thing to explain what we're running through. So that's that's your. amount of trouble but we're sitting we should point out that you're hearing it mic'd through a microphone right we are sitting about four or five feet from it and we're kind of seated if we were uh at a gig our ears would be even higher right. so that's uh, even here just sitting here it sounds a little and if bright. You're at a small gig yeah. you'd be much closer yeah <laughs> so what we said that we'd try and do is brian's going to go back there and he's going to fool with the eq of the amp so that it sounds good to him standing in front of the amp. So forget what it sounds like to us out here. He's going to EQ it so it sounds good to him. And you guys are going to hear that through the mic. So this is a, essentially a comparison of what would be going to the PA system right. at a club. Right. Uh, because as we talked about before, not only are you, you know, kind of screwing with the people in the front rows who are standing right in front of the amp, mm -hmm. but you're also kind of affecting what the uh, the PA is picking up. Mm -hmm. So he's going to EQ it first to have it sound good there. So you'll hear what that sounds right. like. And then that, Another thing we also didn't really address is that if you're playing a four-hour gig, by that fourth set, your ears are fatigued, and you're yes. turning up your presence, and you're turning yes. up your treble. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So then what, what he's going to do is he's going to get a little bit lower, and he's going to adjust it, kind of like what the, the viewer said in the email, He's going to adjust it so that it sounds good when he's closer in front of the speaker. And you guys are going to hear what a large difference that makes in terms of the tone that uh, comes through the microphone. So that'll give you some idea how much uh, variance you can have yeah. just in how you EQ your amp based on where you're right. standing. Well, I was thinking, like right now, I, I put the mic in a position that sounds, you know, fairly yeah. decent for that amp. Yep. So it's, it's got... It's it's off to the side a lot more like it's nowhere near the center of that speaker. Yeah, it is. You, it's, you know uh, I mean? well, that's a one by single that's, twelve. That's a single twelve. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a ribbon mic. Yeah, yeah just MXL ribbon mic. Yeah. Ribbon mic. But um, so right now I actually have it set to where it sounds, you know, pretty decent. Right now where it's at. Yeah. But if I walk back there, it sounds real muffled. Exactly. So you so, go back there and you adjust the treble on the amp just like what did, the guy wrote. Adjust the treble so that you standing right there, it right. sounds bright enough. Right, right. And I'll just okay. pretend that I'm are, not dying. Are you <laughs> are you distorting? Well, let's start with clean, okay. and then uh, you EQ it for clean.
Okay, so so right there sounds when I'm above it like that, yeah. it sounds about like it does. Like it yeah. now, it's really bright. Yeah. <laughs> Un would you that's, say uncomfortably bright? That's, that's an understatement. How about you, Max? <laughs> but how about when they uh, switch to the bridge pickup? Here? In the ear. You ever get that thing in your ear where it sounds like the inside of your ear is kind of like vibrating a little bit? Just get me? a root canal. I might want to. <laughs> I want to get that checked. All right. So that is essentially, you know, what we're experiencing now is more or less what somebody in the crowd would be experiencing if they were sitting in front right. of the amp. Yeah. So now, I don't know if you kind of got to get down lower, but mm -hmm. EQ that to where I can play normally and it's not ear shattering to you treble wise sure, sure, sure. Nicer up here. So yeah, but I mean, now it's yeah. There's no sparkle to it. Essentially, that brings us right back to what he was talking about mm -hmm. when he adjusts the controls so that the people in the crowd aren't complaining. It sounds like all the life has been sucked out of his tone, and right. so that's essentially what we're hearing right here, and probably what you guys are hearing on the recording, right? Because uh, this is what the sound. This is the difference in tone that the sound man would be getting back at the board. Mm -hmm. based on where you stand when you EQ your amp. Right. What's the moral of the story here? What uh, What's our takeaway for this guy? Well, the big question is, how, I mean, I, I, like me personally, how I would fix it is I would fix it for the, uh, I've done it both ways. I've done it where it, says, where it sounds good, where I'm at, and just moved it so it's not, Kill it, you know, kill yeah. it. You like try to kind of so that's option both one modes. is move the amp yeah. so but, that it's yeah. not pointed at somebody, right. so then you can EQ away to your heart's delight and hopefully right. it'll sound good to everyone. Um, in a perfect world, like the, the few times that I do go to like broad, like Nashville or something and play where there's some sort of decent monitoring system, yeah, and not you know, like $300 PA system right. somewhere, <laughs> uh, then, then I mean, I'm working off the monitors more than anything yes. because, because they use a lot of shields, yeah. So you don't really hear a lot, and you hear some of the amp, mm -hmm. but most of what you're hearing is in the monitor. That whole idea about good monitors and monitoring capabilities, that's really kind of hit or miss depending on, on where you're playing, I would think. Mm -hmm. You know, Max, when you go out and you play places, how much control do you always have over the, the PA system that's at the place? I mean, especially at my level of playing, I'm usually bringing the PA, so I have quite a bit of control over it. Right. But if I'm playing a, a place that has house, I'm kind of at their mercy. You just yeah. kind of have hope to have a good rapport with the guy. And, yeah, you know, and hope they don't screw you. You ever take your wireless back there and just sound check? Be like, no, no, turn turn some of that trouble down. Right wireless, there, yeah. Your wire, wireless What's guitar. Wire? I'm not understand. familiar with that term. Is that, <laughs> your your hundred foot guitar. Is that sort of, oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, whether or not they have good monitoring, that really affects kind of what your options are. Mm -hmm. Because if you if let's say you don't have, let's say you either don't have the option to put your guitar through the monitors, or uh, they have monitors, but uh, for whatever reason, they don't have the capabilities of doing that. So right. your early options at that point are really to kind of tilt the amp so it's not pointing at you and it's not pointing at the crowd. That way you can get a, 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 a tone that sounds good. Yeah. But if you have the capability of getting a good enough monitoring level, then that really opens up your options. Now you could put a shield up. Now you could, um, if it's a big venue and you can turn your amp around backwards, Basically, if you do something too drastic with blocking it or turning it, you're going to lose enough of the life out of your tone from where you're standing that it's right. going to distract you while you're playing. Yeah. And that's where the uh, miking it and having the sound guy you yeah. know, put it through the monitors can I, really help. I will say the thing I hate the most is putting it on an amp stand. Oh. I hate that I mean, it takes all yeah. the bottom end yeah. out of it completely. Yeah. It can take a... It can take a huge sounding amp and make it sound like a little itty bitty thing. And it's like, I don't know why people think that that is so great. Like, oh, it totally isolates it from the stage. I'm like, 
don't. Well, I don't know <laughs> why. Don't why do is that, that a good? Why don't. is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah. Really no, the fun. one thing that amp stands are good for is like in your studio, keeping your amps off the ground so you can vacuum underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your pizza box. That that's is, really what they're good for. That is, yeah, but that's yeah. true. But no, I, I I used to know a guy who, when he played, he had his amp, not even just. I mean, it was like it was like a rack, and it like would mm -hmm. put it within two feet of his head. Mm -hmm. And he managed, I mean, he he could do it, but I couldn't. Like, I like the sound of my amp back there, blast like he's blasting off the back wall of the club, you know, so that right. the sound fills up the room. But uh, yeah, I mean, but, yeah. the last place I played was I think it was about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, and it, it actually was a VFW, yeah. believe it or not, <laughs> beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, and uh, it but it actually had a bigger stage than like the VFW here in town in Martinsville. Is the stage is about the size of this rug. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's like eight by ten. And so this was just you, correct, or was there other that, instruments? No, there was a whole bit. Yeah. So, oh. so at this at this Bloomington. Well, that's a neat trick. It was a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, and what I actually did then, it wasn't a gigantic stage, but I I propped it up just a little bit, like okay. take back just just a little bit, not like at a forty five. So that goes over just, the heads. Just barely over the heads. Yeah. I mean, kind of like. Yeah. Like you know, what I mean, I it doesn't take a much bit, but as yeah. long as you get out of that direct right. beam, you know, 15, 20 degrees right. over. And, and one thing I do do, I, one thing I do do, <laughs> but, but uh, one thing I do as well yeah. is uh, I do like to like get in front of the mains and actually listen to the yeah. guitar coming out, and that way I'm like, all right, we need to fiddle with the EQ a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? Because I mean, there's just really no great way in that situation unless yeah. unless you got cash to spend on a great sound system. That is true. So positioning is like the cheap way mm -hmm. of uh, solving the problem, mm -hmm. but it can be hard because most amp stands they kind of want to just don't use. The they want to angle them up yeah. at you too far. So what I've done, you know, uh, when I used to play in church, is just do it the cheap way. You just move it far enough away from the mm -hmm. wall that when you lean it back against the wall, it's not pointing straight out and it's right. also not pointing up at your ears. Mm -hmm. So. So if you're yeah. thinking about using an amp stand, call us. We'll talk you <laughs> off the ledge. You don't need just don't do this to yourself or your band or your audience. Yeah. <laughs> so, a common question we get is about how to set up a clean tone. Whether it's a customer asking us how they should set up a clean tone or how I set up a clean tone, I'm sure you probably get tons of people, uh, you know, with the Texas Blues Alley stuff you're doing, asking about you know how to set up a clean yep. tone. Max, I know. You get tons and tons of questions yeah. about it. So he, I, he loves it. I mean, you got any questions about setting up your amp, Max at Wampler In fact, Pedals. just for fun, just send an email to Max at Wampler Pedals and ask them how to set up a clean tone. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and, and we all, we've talked about this. We all yep. kind of approach it totally differently. So yep. why don't you explain first? Uh, okay. We'll kind of pass a guitar along. and, yep. and uh, All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Brian go back there. We're using a, a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, which you know uh, Brian's a huge fan of. Uh, the clean channel, and I'm going to have him switch between clean and dirty. And so what I've done is I've kind of preset those so I don't have to mess with that. And the question that was asked centered not just around clean, but how do you set up an amp's clean tone to accommodate pedals? Uh, and so that's kind of how I'm going to be approaching this, is that my goal is to be able to use my pedals and mm -hmm. sound good. So mm -hmm. let's switch places here. Sure. And let me uh, talk about how I usually go about doing this. So... If I'm going to be playing any... Seat's warm. Yeah. Wow. I run a little hot. <laughs> need an air conditioner on my seat. <clears throat> so whenever I'm playing a show or playing more than a couple songs in a row where I have the luxury of having pedals, the first thing that I want to do is establish what's going to be my, my bass tone. This is the tone that I retreat to for 90% of my playing, for rhythm. Uh, it's usually not a really clean tone because if I'm doing more of the Texas blues kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan-ish kind of thing. Uh, he didn't use a purely clean tone that often. So here is the Hot Rod Deluxe perfectly clean. So for me, for what I play, that would not be what I'd consider a usable tone for typical upbeat blues rhythm type stuff. So can I have you switch that to the overdrive channel now? Uh, and even though the overdrive channel of the Hot Rod Deluxe isn't great, if you were stuck using that amp, this is kind of a good example of how I go about doing it. So I'd get it set up for not too much dirt, 
just enough so that if you were uh, kind of the benchmark I use is if you could comfortably comfortably play the rhythm to a song like Pride and Joy without feeling like you're losing too much energy, that's a good amount of grip. Okay, so that's a decent amount of grit. If you back off your attack a little bit, you can kind of get a clean tone. So what I would do then is once I have that bass, somewhat dirty tone established, the next thing that I'd do is say, what's my first level of boost? So what I'm gonna use here is just the, um, the boost side of the uh, Plexi Drive Deluxe, because that's what we have on here. And I would set that for a tiny volume boost, but mostly a sustained boost. So this would probably be too much of a volume jump for me. Because uh, the problem you get into is that if your volume jumps too much when you kick on your pedals, then the sound man turns you down. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to your regular tone, and now you're out of the mix. And if you're like the sound man that I've had the unfortunate experience of using in the past, you, you never come back from that. Right. He's a set it and forget it. So he, right. he'll he adjust it when you get too loud, but he won't fix it when you get too quiet. So, <laughs> so then what I would have is... And so that would be usable for 90% of what I do. Sometimes I would stack another overdrive on top of that to just give me a little bit more sustain. But that would be how I set up an amp for use with pedals. But because we're using a two-channel amp here, I still have the clean channel, if you want to switch back to that, mm -hmm. uh, that I can kind of, you know, back off a little bit more to the clean. I would use the clean tone as kind of something that I only use for playing ballads. But that's a kind of a, a rare thing. I'd mainly use the slightly overdriven tone as my bass tone. Now, as kind of a compare and contrast, what I was playing before was the overdrive channel with a little boost. I could kind of get a slightly different tone by using the gain section of the plexi drive. Oh, a little too much volume there. Let's compare this. So I could kind of use this as kind of a an alternate overdriven bass tone. So now this is the plexi drive, the gain side, going into the clean channel of the Hot Rod Deluxe. All right, now one more switch back to the overdrive channel of the amp mm -hmm. so I can compare those. So yep. this versus so you can hear the the overdrive channel of the amp is a little bit thinner than what you get with but the point is i would have the completely clean tone mm -hmm. i would have the overdrive channel by itself i would have the overdrive channel plus that boost i would also have the clean channel plus the gain side of the plexi drive mm -hmm and the clean channel plus the gain side of the plexi drive plus the boost. Right. So I'd have a bunch of different tones just with that one amp and this one pedal. And so that's kind of how I would go about and setting it up. Now, would you uh, put an EQ pedal in the loop to make that dirt channel not suck? Um, <laughs> if I had an EQ pedal and I had enough cables, then I probably would. Um, but sometimes when you're, you know, depending on where you're going to play mm -hmm. and uh, backline provided, <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get right you know and so you show up and it's oh it's a fender twin without a gain channel you know nice. so in that case you better you better have a good amp in the box pedal or a good right. distortion pedal or something so let me okay. pass it off to one of you guys okay, you so talk about total options yeah so i'll so go back should i switch it to clean again? yeah to get it off that what they call it a drive channel i think i call it a suck channel it's it, kind of a clean it's, it's, appreciation channel because it makes you appreciate the clean channel. Yeah, exactly, because it, it, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's bad. It's the first time I played the guitar, so. You want me to grab hey. you a different one? No, no, let's, okay. let's use the same guitar just okay. for, just for uh, purity's sake. See, so right now I'm thinking I'm way too bright. So right now I'm, I'm going ahead and 
changing okay. the EQ for myself. Okay, so I, I nudged the treble down, I nudged the okay. presence down. Would you say you go for a warmer clean tone or a brighter yeah, clean tone? a warmer clean tone because I, I'm, like, rather than finding a clean tone and setting my pedals to it, I kind of have my pedals and set my clean tone. Right. So, like, what... So if there's, if there's, like, sparkle to be added, you want to be able to maximize the amount of sparkle you can add from the pedal as opposed to having the amp so bright that you have to dial back the sparkle right. and treble Because 98% of the time, I'm not going to play clean. Gotcha. Most, most of the time, I'll be going through a dirt pedal of some sort. Gotcha. So, for example... <laughs> guess that you could get that tone from that amp and that pedal but that's just good because I've always been setting it up the way that I you know I think about tone and you've got a completely different it's a totally di yeah so I said it totally different so if I my clean tone so not super sparkly yeah just kind of kind of kind of neutral I guess yeah, you go for a you know a very plain mm -hmm. comfortable clean tone because mm -hmm. you're you're setting that up as the platform to optimize the sound of your pedal. Right, so if I want a clean tone. So the, the, a little the, bit amp, of dirt. the amp is not, I think what, what it comes down to is that with when it comes to playing through different amps that you're not used to it's really the gain channel that is kind of the outlier that you can't really count on because any amp you can get a pretty neutral clean tone mm -hmm. would that be safe to pretty, say absolutely. Well, yeah. well well hold on with there's an ac30 behind you okay well so yeah that's that's it's very chimey it's yeah that's yeah. that's chime city pretty much wherever you said it i mean yeah. you can you can you can get a little dull with the top cut but yeah. uh, not dull is not a good word, but it's still yeah. still very boxy. So yes. I find that those amps can be a little finicky with with their okay. pedals. But like a Fender, or a Marshall, or a pretty much. I mean, if you're using a Fender, leave the bright switch off. Yeah. Um, if you're using a Vox, leave the bright switch off. Yeah. Or leave you, it at home. Yeah. <laughs> if you're using an amp with a bright switch, <laughs> leave it off. I mean, that that's the my my yeah. personal preference as far as dirt pedals go. I just uh, like you hear I hear a lot of people talk about how dirt pedal certain dirt pedal with a certain amp. Uh, is raspy or um, you know may have this weird high harmonic yeah. I'm like it might be because of how you're setting the amp yeah 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 so so you kind of set that amp for a plain vanilla kind of even neutral clean tone and then you let the pedal sound the way that it's going to sound and that mm -hmm. is almost a, a better way to get more predictable results depending on no matter which amp you're using because right. if you can find that neutral setting in any amp now you know what your pedal's going to sound like right more or less yep yep very cool so all right max I'll, uh, I'll I'll stand back by the amp and you, te <laughs> you tell me what to tweak. Oh no! You you may set it up sort of like what uh, Anthony had here. Yeah. Now Max, you play a lot of reggae. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, I'm more into ska and punk rock. Okay. Let's just say a little bit, little bit of polka on the side, maybe. So you don't actually like play then? No, I'm much. I'm like the uh, the mighty <laughs> boss tones. I just dance. It's, it's right. my job. Wave the flag. <laughs> So I just, uh, I'm kind of a combination of the two, really. Um, if I'm familiar with the amp, or um, it's a low wattage amp, I'll try to crank the amp up so it's on just on the verge of breakup. Then I'll add a uh, tube screamer tone to it. I was gonna say, do you want me to throw a tube screamer on here? Yeah, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me grab a tube screamer. Okay. Yeah, I usually run two tube screamers. Two seconds. If you had two, we could just run them right in circuit. All right. Uh, yes. So I'm kind of right in the middle on uh, between these two guys of how I set it up. If I already have an amp, I know it's going to break up. I'll, I'll start setting the amp up so it's just on the verge of breakup. Then I'll boost it with a series of light overdrives. Um, if it's an amp I'm unfamiliar with or I just can't get dirty or it does get dirty and that dirty tone sucks, um, I'll just have it stock clean, as clean as I can possibly get it. Um, then I'll stick a tube screamer, just pretty much all the controls straight up and down, just so it's kind of a light overdrive. like. <laughs> Just right on the verge. So Which one do you that's have just, on? That's just the... Yeah, right now I have just the first 808 on. So oh, so you put 
the first one in the signal chain on first. First, correct. Oh, yep. okay. A topic for another video. Yeah. So, but so, yeah, that's interesting. So okay. are you EQing the amp for the sound that you want with the tube screen rod? Yeah, if if I can, I can't get a good sound of the amp. I'll set it clean. Then I'll set up my tube screamer. Then I'll adjust the amp accordingly. Okay. So, um, so like right now, do I need to change anything for what? No, no, we're good. Yeah, it's uh, clean, totally clean. It's basically the same tone that Brian had when he was doing it. So, yeah. if basically what you're saying is, if you can't get a good overdrive sound of the amp, you approach it kind of like Brian, and that you set the amp for yeah. kind of neutral. I actually, whenever I, whenever before we switched, I actually went back and increased the treble just a little bit. Okay. To, to noonish. Okay. Across and, everything. And that's pretty much what I do. I play with Tortex picks too. Which kind of mid rangey anyways. You okay. know, a turtle, a turtle died for that. It's it's true. Yeah, it's true. I'd I'll kill a thousand more turtles for this. But if he knew how good your tone was, <laughs> he'd be happy. He would have made the same choice. <laughs> he'd be happy. Um, but yes, that's that's kind of my approach. It. So just on the verge of breakup, everything kind of at noon. I have a lighter pick attack anyways. I'm not. If I really dig in, it'll break up more. Um, so I'll do that, and then if I want to boost it for my lead tone, I'll actually use another tube screamer. Here I'm using the uh, TS-10. Um, fat fingers. It's kind of that scoot mid uh, mid range feel for me. It works really well. I play a super reverb normally most of the time, or a blues junior. So that pairs perfectly with something so it, like that. Yeah. yeah, with a with a strad on the neck pickup, the way God intended. <laughs> it sounds great. I think so, we have the title for the show as God intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that's kind of I set it up. It's kind of in the middle. If if I can, I always want to crank up my amp first and right. set up my amp first, then adjust my pedals accordingly. Yeah. But if not, I I'm, I know what a tube screamer sounds like. It's it's my safety blanket. So um, your bass tone then, the, the tone that you're kind of home base, the tone that you retreat to for most of your rhythm playing would be the clean kind of neutral sounding amp, maybe a little bright, brighter than what Brian would set it for, but then with a tube screamer, all the knobs up, just giving you a little bit of that tubey sound. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And then another pedal after that for boost. Very hunky. Yeah. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't use that term. I was going to say, <laughs> i got to be racist. Very mid-rangey. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So three different approaches to using the same, you know, the same amp. Very cool. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of the Chasey Tone Podcast. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to this on uh, in your car, for example, a podcast, the audio podcast. Uh, just email us at podcast at wamplerpedals.com. I'm Brian for Max and Anthony, for Anthony from Texas Blues Alley. Thanks for watching.